Hello and welcome to From the South, Telesaur's Daily News Show. We start off, as always, in Latin America. Large crowds line the streets in support of former Argentine President Cristina Fernandez as she testified in the federal court in a corruption case which she described as a formidable maneuver of political persecution. Lawyers for Fernandez filed a motion Monday urging the court to dismiss claims of wrongdoing in the awarding of government contracts during the 2007-2015 tenure. Fernandez, who declined to answer questions at Monday's hearing, said afterward that the accusations amount to a terrible absurdity. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro says he had a good conversation with U.S. diplomat Thomas Shannon, the U.S. Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs. He added that he expects good results from the dialogue with opposition factions following the meeting with Shannon. The U.S. has in the past accused President Maduro's government of being a dictatorship. Opposition protests will continue this week as government opponents demand the referendum process continue. Cuba's 34th annual International Trade Fair of Havana opened on Monday, bringing together some 4,500 entrepreneurs from 75 nations around the world. The event seeks to improve Cuba's relationship with international companies in an effort to diversify its foreign trade. Cuban Minister of Foreign Trade Rodrigo Malmairaica who inaugurated the fair, said the U.S. economic blockade that remains in force continued to cause damage to Cuba's economy and was the main obstacle to the normalization of relations between Cuba and the United States. Thousands of endangered Taricaya turtles have been released in Purdue's Amazon region as part of the efforts to conserve the species on the verge of extinction. On Sunday, staff from Peru's National Service of Natural Areas protected by the state released about 17,000 baby turtles as part of an ongoing program. The Taricaya were once in abundance along the Amazon, but due to development and logging in the region, their population numbers have been under pressure. In international news, according to the Iraqi army, its forces have advanced the outskirts of the eastern part of the city of Mosul. This makes it the first time the government forces have gotten to this area since the Islamic State group militants took it over in 2014. At least 11 people were killed and 59 wounded when a gas cylinder exploded and started a fire inside an oil tanker being broken up for scrap in southern Pakistan. Industrial accidents are common in Pakistan, with workplaces often forgoing basic safety measures and equipment in the absence of legislation to protect laborers. China showed off its newest warplane, the J-20 stealth fighter, during its first public flight at the Zhuhai Air Show. The country's newest warplane, the radar evading jets, are armed with long-range missiles. The warplanes represent a leap forward in China's ability to project power in Asia. The head of the International Criminal Court has spoken to leaders of three African nations who have decided to leave the organization to reconsider. This after South Africa, Gambia and Burundi all officially notified the United Nations of their intent to withdraw from the 1998 treaty that established the ICC. Leaders of the Islamic Hamas movement announced that they have offered President of the Palestinian Authority, Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, a deal to achieve unity and end the almost decade-long division. Hamas Poltipero head Khalid Mish'al and his deputy Ismail Haniya met with President Abbas on Thursday in the Qatari capital Doha for a business lunch. The meeting was hosted by Qatari Foreign Minister Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Tahani. The trio agreed that reconciliation was the path to saving the Palestinian national project and destroying Israel's plans aiming to uphold the two-state solution. Abbas stressed during the meeting on the necessity of forming a new national unity government and holding comprehensive elections. President Abbas has the will to end the division. That is why he has repeatedly visited the Qatari capital Doha for the good ties the Qatari officials have with Hamas. President Habas' last meeting with Mr. Khaled Mashal was important for the two parties to reach a comprehensive understanding for ending the division and achieving reconciliation. Hamas has been at odds with Abbas's Fatah movement, which runs the West Bank since 2007. The two parties have had particularly tense relations since the unity government of Hamas and Fatah was dissolved in 2015, one year after it was first announced. In September, in an controversial decision, the Fatah-run Supreme Court in Ramallah postponed a vote in the municipal elections that were set for October 8 following disputes over candidates' lists. Nurharazin Tilsu TV, Gaza. 
An ugly escalation of tensions in northern Syria, militants lead by the Nusra Front targeted the western neighborhoods of the city of Aleppo with poison gas. Reports indicate that shells were fired containing calorine gas, which has led to more than 48 cases of asphyxia. The symptoms that we have seen at the hospitals are the symptoms of chlorine gas. Soldiers were wounded. There are no civilian casualties. Those who are infected have a shortness of breath, tears. We have given them first aid treatment and have provided oxygen. This is for the more mild cases. The medium intensity cases have been transferred to another unit to be monitored. Under what the militants are calling the battle to break the siege of Aleppo. They pumped the safe western neighborhoods of the city with more than 100 mortar shields and dozens of explosive gas canisters in addition to more than 50 grad rockets. This is not the first time the terrorists have used chemical weapons. They are always using all kinds of destruction and murder, but unfortunately, as the United States and its allies are providing them with weapons and support, and the United Nations is silent towards such actions, the Syrian people are paying the price. While the UN Special Envoy to Syria, Stefan de Mistura, expressed his shock and extreme concern in a statement issued in Geneva, according to credible reports quoting sources in the field that the militant's attack on Western Aleppo has killed more than 84 civilians, most of them children and women, and wounded more than 300 while destroying several residential buildings. Hazim Abdullah, Tilisur, Damascus. And finally, the Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos, is celebrated in Mexico from October 31st to November 2nd. It's a festive and colorful holiday celebrating the lives of those who have passed on. The holiday was recognized by UNESCO as part of the Cultural Heritage of Humanity in 2008. And that's all for From the South. For more on these and other stories, you can visit our website, telsortv.net slash English.